Hey YouTubers, this is my 2008 Acura TL. Now, I'm going to be showing you my car computer. So basically, when I come into my car on a daily basis, come in, just like you would, foot on the brake, key in the ignition, turn on the car. Now, as you can see, navigation boots up as it should and then the computer immediately comes on as it, it was it was uh, in sleep mode um, I get a lot of messages that uh, I might be a victim of software counterfeiting as you can tell computer is a Windows 7 computer Intel motherboard I, I put an i3 in it it's you could put an i7 if you really wanted to, but it's not worth it. Um, I mean, it's got three solid state hard drives. Uh, what else does it have? A TV tuner, GPS, Microsoft GPS to be exact. Um, video camera system, Wi Fi, Bluetooth. You can see my Wi Fi networks. In this case, Groove is my cell phone. I have unlimited data through Verizon and I. Basically, just stream my music from Groove Shark. That's what you're listening to right now. Some Isley Brothers. The Groove Shark app here basically just is all I use for music when I drive. I just tether, use my 4G internet. It's fast enough. I mean, um, yeah, so I'm gonna go to the next song here, find a different song. Something not as slow. Um, now, it is somewhat hard to read for the fact that this is an analog monitor. Acura uses an analog monitor and uh, there is a way to change it. It's just too much work. And then also, this being a touchscreen, I don't know if you can see. Let me get my flashlight. See the, the uh, toggle switch right there? Ah. This black toggle switch here. Basically, flipping that puts it on the stock navigation, which is a touchscreen, okay? You can actually connect the touchscreen with a, and interface it to Windows 7, but you literally have to take the whole dash out. So, I kind of was just like, you know what, I'm, I don't want to do that. Now, that red button there, that red button's the on-off switch for the computer, as any computer has. Like, I mean, you just turn it on, turn it off. Um basically power it you can hold it down and you can reset it that way um, but really there's no need the computer turns on and off automatically now on here what I normally do if I can't read something I just hit the magnifier here and I'm able to actually just use Windows magnifier for it I know my camera is blurry um, as you can see, it put something a little, um, anyways, I'm using, I'm going to exit the nav, this magnifier right now, it's just Windows magnifier, that's the desktop, I'm using a live wallpaper by Deskapes, this right here, um, you can see it actually move, it moves slowly, it's just the earth, and it actually keeps track, like obviously um, it's nighttime over here, and in China, it's over there. This is actually real time. It's just like a live wallpaper that, and like on your Android phone. That's called Deskapes. Just software that I ended up buying. It's like twenty bucks. Um, and what I could do, I can actually put different ones on here. Once you buy it, there there's a bunch of them you can use. Like for example, this one's Jupiter, and it's Moon Euphora. Uh, pretty cool. I have my little system gauge there, I got a clock, and most importantly, I have real-time traffic. Um, you can use Microsoft GPS, Microsoft Streets and Tips, Streets and Trips or whatever, as you can see. Um, and then, I got a DVR tuner here. That's obviously what I'm looking at. That's the front camera. Kind of crooked, I gotta adjust it. That's my backup camera. Hey, putting my foot on the brake. 
Um, it's very, I, have a, I live in a very dark neighborhood. These two cameras are not on right now, but I have two cameras on the bottom of the car, which are my uh, blind spot cameras. Literally, it's on the, I'll, I'll show it to you in a bit, but it's literally on the splash guards. Now, on the computer, everything's already set up in a way where, like, I have this deskscape thing here, and you got your start menu. I do have Grand Theft Auto on here, which is very important at times. Hoyle Casino, which is also very important. If you go to computer, aside from Drive C, Drive C is just a small uh, solid state drive which is dedicated to programs and nothing else really. Drive M is another solid state drive, it's 120 gig, full of just music. Just a ton of music. And this is actually legible. I, I obviously customize Windows so I can read it. There's certain things in Windows you can't read and that's where the magnifier comes in handy. It's also a video hard drive. I used to have a ton of South Park, Simpsons. Right now all I got is Scooby-Doo on here. Uh, it comes in handy if you live in Southern California and you drive to Vegas a lot like so. Then yeah. The computer also has a valet switch. The valet switch is right there. It's that little silver toggle switch. And what that does, that basically acts like the computer is on and on. I mean that basically tells the computer that the car is on or off. So when I flip this switch, it's the equivalent of me shutting the car off right now. See, nothing's happened yet. But what happens is when you flip that switch, it cuts the ignition power to the computer giving it saying, "Hey, um, the car is off." And so what that does is that gives it 30 seconds to shut down. So the computer will automatically in this case, I, it's not set to shut down, it's set to go to sleep. So, in 30 seconds, it should automatically go to sleep. And we're just waiting. See? Cuts off. It's off. That's because I flipped that switch up. That's my valet mode. Valet mode is basically, well, what it said, when you go to valet, you don't want them messing with the computer, you don't want nothing with it. I always just flip that switch up, or if I go to the car wash, then I also typically will put it back to stock navigation uh, just so they can't mess with it and that way um, I mean they can still use the backup camera if need be. Now the when I flip this switch it takes about I want to say 10 seconds before the, the computer cuts back on. It's the equivalent of the car starting so the switch has been flipped and now this should come back on. see give it a second boom this computer is really fast because it has solid states and once again victim of software counterfeiting this computer is very fast because it has a solid state drive it literally if I boot it from start it shows the Windows logo you know the little Windows uh, splash screen and it doesn't even get all the way through it it gets like literally less than halfway through it and then boom it loads um, what I use to control the computer is this little touchpad here. This touchpad, let me shut this, let me shut this uh, flashlight off. This wireless touchpad is everything, basically full keyboard. Um, this is, this controls the mouse when you do this. Um, it has a mode thing here so I can actually tell it to pause. And then I can tell it next song, back a song, I can mute, I can open Internet Explorer, computer, and mail, which I don't even use those. Despite the fact, Windows, I mean, I, I do use Outlook, but I never set it up on this computer. Because there's no point, this is really more my leisure computer. And I, I, I still use it for troubleshooting, like I can log in different computers. I have another touchpad, it's a Logitech. This one's just strictly a touchpad. I always keep it, just in case the battery for this one runs out, you just turn this on and this thing's smooth, like, oftentimes I'll just put it right here on my cup holder and I'll just be like, driving, you know. Now some people say you shouldn't use your cell phone and drive, let alone having a car computer is probably technically worse, but those people that do it, I think they're just driving wrong. Anyways, uh, there's also a kill switch on the very bottom there, there are two toggles that go to the back and basically one of them controls USB devices, the cameras, the other one solely for the computer. This computer has two power supplies. It has a Pico PSU and it has a uh, 
uh, another power supply which is made in China which I don't know any company that does it but basically that power supply is solely for the motherboard and onboard USB devices the other one uh, goes to a USB hub a USB 3 hub which is powered through it and then everything else is powered through that now let me turn all the lights on in the cabin let's go to the back seat oh wait let me show you this um, sorry for the mess but right there those are my earbuds you can't really see it but this thing right here is a USB port uh, my auxiliary audios in there but that USB port you can plug in a hard drive flash stick your phone uh, to even just get media off of it this computer also has Bluetooth so you can also connect um, I mean well it also has a microphone right there this little thing is a microphone it just sits on right there uh, you could do hands-free this car already has hands-free so I never set it up but I did set it up so that way I can play music from my phone to the computer um, oops what did I just do? I think I just hit play or something, yeah. Um, I can play music straight off of my phone as long as you have Bluetooth 2.0 and above and you can stream it basically straight to the speakers of the car. I said, I just use, I just use Groove Shark. Um, literally, I probably use, I want to say almost 5 gigs a month in data on this alone. I love this song. So, um, this is connected straight into my auxiliary. They spliced it into the auxiliary because I didn't want to lose my auxiliary port. I mainly, I set it up like that for a reason. Just because you got to have your auxiliary. And I don't even know why that's not playing. Um, okay, so let's go to the back or on our way there. Let me show you. Right there, under the car, this little thing. To get my flashlight. As you can see, that is a blind spot camera. Then I have one on both sides of my splash card. Now, let me pop the trunk real quick. Inside the back seat. I said my car is just a little bit of a mess. If you look. Come on. Uh, see right there? That's a USB cable that comes out. The, on the window here, it's an antenna. That's a USB hub. That's basically where... That's just a small hub. That Those are the two dongles that control the... Uh, the uh, What's that thing called? The, the, the two touchpads. Right there behind it's the Microsoft GPS. This USB extension cable that's coming through there is basically a, a repeater, so that way it doesn't lose signal. You know how USB loses signal? Let's go in the trunk and let's look at the computer. I recently added this capacitor. It's a Raptor. It's a one farad. Uh, because what was happening, and I explained the two power supplies, there's no capacitors on the power supply, so when you roll all the windows down at the same time, the computer shuts off because of low voltage. Capacitor prevents this. And it tells you the voltage, which is nice if your battery's ever low, but the computer never really drains the battery unless something goes terribly wrong. It's only happened a few times, very rarely, and even then, my battery's just shot anyways, I need a new one. This converts HDMI to RCA. As I said, it's analog. That there's the TV tuner. I use the uh, Hop Hodge software. These are all the ports on the back of the computer. This bottom unit is the computer. On the top of it, this plastic thing, yeah, don't ask me where I got the box from, but, because obviously that thing's tiny, um, you also have to get a slim mounted fan so everything fits in there and a micro ITX board, but basically everything in there, um, oh, I ended up running two SATA cables externally, inside of here are two solid state drives, and then I mounted the capacitor on top, um, I mean, it's pretty clean. There was a USB 3.0 hub switch right here, but I took that out because I had all these ports and I didn't have any use for it. This board already has eight ports on the back of it. I don't think you can really see it. But yeah, that's the computer and that's the front of it. There's some fans on the front and back of it. And it's just mounted down. 
And yeah, that's the car computer. And literally, there was a lot of little troubleshooting that I had to do with this computer. Like I did have random wakes because, I mean, you can set it to shut down, you can set it to wake, to go to sleep, and sleep is kind of finicky, especially when you're using wireless devices. What I realized is the computer would randomly wake because of the fact that the um, dongle would probably pick up something like some sort of interference and think it's a signal and then that would wake the computer so it's the same thing as pushing any button on the keyboard so but after a little troubleshooting I figured it out now this thing is working flawlessly and it I haven't had an issue with it since it's beautiful so yeah that is the car computer and hopefully in my next car which will be years from now I'm gonna bring it with me said so it's just integrated in the stock nav which is the best part nothing ugly about it I didn't want to go anything I didn't want to change anything other than the way I didn't want to change the way this car looked this car is beautiful like I just wanted everything to be stock I really want the touchscreen but as I said you have to take this whole thing out literally take the whole dash apart just to get to this and it's just a pain so anyways enjoy